Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I'm so excited. I'm going to sew today. I can't believe it. Wow, I just checked and it has been over three months since I did a quilt top or any kind of sewing for video. And the last thing I did crafty was like a week after that, so a little less than three months ago, with some crocheting. So it's time. I've just been very busy. I actually uh, had two trips during that time uh, to Memphis in February and then again in April. Plus I have fabric sales that take up my time and I got sick. So I'm feeling much better. I'm still not completely cleared. My head is still congested but uh, my energy level is back up. So here's the deal. When I have fabric frenzies, I sell packets of pre-cuts and I almost always sell out. I think once I had like one leftover, but this time I had some leftovers. I think my shoppers uh, have their fill of fabric, <laughs> but they bought a lot of other things. And this one happens to be 100 pre-cuts, no duplicates. So I have 100 little lovelies here. Sometimes I do 50. Um, now that I have a new supplier, I have a lot more variety. So I'd like to do another one with 200, no duplicates. I have done that before, I believe. Anyway, I'm going to use one of my packets of pre-cuts. And I have six others. I usually make 16, sometimes eight, but uh, I haven't done eight in a long time because they usually sell out. So that means I only sold nine. I have seven left. However... I'm using one, so that means there's six left, and those are going to be on eBay right now as you're watching this. So you can go check it out and grab one of these packets, and you can make what I'm making. Whatever I make will also be on eBay, but not until it's done, obviously. And I think I might split this into two videos, because just to get back into the swing of things, I'd like to make it quick. I'd rather have two five-minute videos than one ten-minute video, and you know that's not even possible for me to do either of those things, five minutes or ten minutes. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep this quick. So here's the plan, because I've had a lot of time to think about it. I just wanted to show what you can do with 100 scrappy pre-cuts. I'm going to try to use them all. If I don't use them all, that's okay. Um, these pre-cuts are actually scraps because they're from the end of a bolt and what I do is I just uh, uh, cut the selvage off and then I cut on the fold and then I fold and I cut and I fold and I cut and of course I trim them a little bit so what it means is the the pre-cuts you know don't end up being the same size like you can see this one's wider but the height of the pre-cuts are not that much off for the most part there might be some that are shorter because for whatever reason, uh, maybe I had cut some of the salvage off, you know, an extra fabric off, I don't know. But for the most part, they're about the same height. So what I want to do is I want to go to my table and I'm going to sort some that look more narrow, uh, make a pile of those, and then a pile of the ones that look a little bit wider. And then I'm going to just start sewing them together, chain piecing, sending two at a time, two at a time, two at a time. Uh, press those open and then just keep putting it together. I'm not going to be doing any sashing at all. I'm just going to be sewing all these squares together. And we'll see how that looks. I think it's going to be cool. It'll be up my alley because I like things that are just wild, wonky, scattered about no intersections having to meet, and that's what this is going to be all about. Now, if uh, my rows uh, will obviously need to be trimmed, because if I make a row of like, I'm thinking 10 and 10, although that might not be as long as I like, I think it'll be a small kind of quilt top, and I don't know. If it's small, I may back it. I don't know yet. But uh, it'll be on the small side, and obviously rows will have to be trimmed. Or if I find that I want to make a row shift over, because sometimes they just accidentally line up, and I really would like them to not line up. Some will, but I don't want intersections matching. I'd rather have that 
staggered look. I can always take a wider block and cut it in half and then put those two pieces, you know, in different places. So I'm just going to go and sort and then I will actually be showing you. I'm going to sew for you and uh, we'll see how it goes. So let's go on over to my sewing table. So here's what I have so far. I actually made three piles. These are the like wider ones that almost, you know, they're almost close to a square. These are a little bit more narrow. I wasn't, you know, overly fussy as to which pile. And then these are even a little bit more narrow. So I can always, um, you know, maybe alternate. Take one from this pile, one from this pile. There's more of this size, so I'll use more of those. Now, out of these 100, we have these four that I won't probably be using unless I need to, but they're not tall enough. Obviously, you can see. Now, in future scrappy pre-cuts, I'm going to try to at least make them all about the same height. Again, that's determined by the, uh, the width of the fabric. But for the most part, these only vary by maybe a half an inch. So I'm just going to sew two together, and then they can be trimmed. The row can be trimmed. But these guys, I don't want to have to trim everything this short. But I'm going to hang on to those. Even this one, see, it's just, let me do it on this color. You know, it's just a little bit too short. I think all of those will work okay together. But these guys, if I need something, I could always cut it in half and then add, you know, this piece to here and then trim it, like, if I do, if I need it. If not, those go into the crumb scraps. I can't believe I'm at my sewing machine. And this is still broken. It has been broken for a very long time, but I'm worried that I'm pushing it to the limit. I have to get it fixed. I just haven't gotten around to doing that. I did want to say before I start sewing that, if you're interested in a packet like this, um, they are on eBay. The link is down below. Just go look in the description box and you'll find the link to my eBay store. All right, I'm just going to just pick things. My only rules for myself are since I have such a big variety, I'm going to try like not to put a yellow up against a yellow and I'm going to try to, you know, just vary the size pieces, but I'm just going to take a piece and I don't know about my settings. Please forgive because it's been a while since I've set up for this and I'm just going to sew on the long edge. I'm just going to put two pieces together. I don't care if they match up. These happen to match up, but some won't. So the whole row will have to be trimmed, and that's okay. So I'm going to just put two pieces together and sew on the long edge. And let's make sure I've got everything right. And it doesn't really matter what your thread color is because um, we're not doing any top stitching, so... And I just use the edge of my foot as my guide, so it's about a quarter of an inch. And I'm leaving it right there. Now I'm going to take two more. And again, I can take a kind of wide, maybe a little bit narrow. I like this together. I like, um, I just like all this stuff. The weirder, the better for me. And this is just what I'm going to do all the way. Ooh, a nice yellow and something dark. And I'm just going to line it up at the top. So at least I won't have to trim the top of these. Just the bottom will have to be trimmed. And I can just let this all fall to the floor. Or I can, uh, you know, maybe try to stack them. I think I'm just going to let them all fall to the floor. This way, you don't have to leave your sewing machine. I mean, obviously, I have my little piles right here, my three piles. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Two more. Now, none of these pre-cuts are cut to perfection, and I'm just using them. I'm, I'm not concerned about it. You know, I don't care if the top is perfectly straight. They're straight enough. I'm just going to do this through the whole pile. Now, see, I'm just not going to put this one here. I mean, that would be okay. A little bit, you know, white and purple. So, I like this 
very contrasting color, orange next to this guy. So let's pretend that I just put all of my 96 blocks together because that's realistically what you would do. You would just sit here until all of these are all put together like this. But let's pretend I did that. So I'm going to take this now and I'm going to I'm going to finger press. You know, I watch Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics and she's big on finger pressing because she just doesn't like to take the time um, to, you know, get up and press. And I don't want to either. I want to just sit here and do this. And you don't have to be concerned as to which side. Now, a lot of people like things nesting, but we have no idea where these two blocks, you know, what other two blocks these are going to butt up against. So we're not going to worry about nesting. I'm not going to worry about pressing to the light or the dark side. You know, sometimes it just has a way, like this guy just wants to lean this way. So I'm just going to let him lean that way. And I'm just going to press with my fingernail. You know, they say, be careful, don't stretch it. Don't worry about stuff like that. Who cares? <laughs> that is, you know, flat enough. Now, I can see that this was my edge that I kind of lined up. So let me, let me um, get another one ready here. Okay, let's do this one because that'll go good together. So you would just take now all the blocks that you just made and you would just press it like that. Here's my straight edge. This is the edge that will end up being trimmed. So let's just join these together now. So I'm going to add this to here like this and I'm just going to line up the top. I'm just going to keep one edge straight and then the other edge can be trimmed. And then you would finger press these also. And then when I have a row that is either like 10 blocks wide or maybe a certain amount of inches wide, then I can go and press that open and then lay them all on the table and, you know, and just see how they look. Again, some of the rows, um, you know, will have to be trimmed and if something needs to be added, like say they're almost all good but there's one that's a little short, well instead of trimming all the others, I can take this piece and, you know, cut it in half and then, you know, and make it long. Sew it down here so I'll have a long strip. And, yes, there'll be a little seam somewhere, but that's okay. Or just go to your scraps and create a piece that will work with this and stick it on the end and then trim. It's better to add to one strip or two strips than to trim all the other strips. You know, we want it as wide as possible. So, you know what? I think I'm actually going to stop this video here because I want to just keep sewing. And you don't have to see me sew all of these together. So, I'm just going to sew all my 96 blocks together to make a two patch like this. And then I'm going to start sewing those together. And I'm going to, you know, stop at, you know, nine or ten blocks. Decide when I get there. And then I will come back and show you the next step. Thank you so much for watching. Please go check out the eBay listing for these guys if you want to get one of them. Um, I don't know if they'll sell out quick or not. They may. They may hang out for a little bit. If there's any left, I'll remind you in the next video. And the next video might be the last video. And at that point, you'll be able to um, bid on this uh quilt top or quilt. I don't know if I'm going to finish it or not. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being so patient, uh, waiting for something crafty for those of you who like this kind of stuff. And I will be back with more soon. Part two. Bye.